Hi, thanks for watching this quick video on navigating tips and tricks when you're working with QuickBooks Online. My name is Michelle Long and I am a CPA and the owner of Long for Success. I'm the author of several different books. You can check them out all on Amazon if you're interested. There's a URL to find those. I'm also thrilled to say that I'm an international speaker for Intuit. I've had the privilege of going not just across the U.S. and Canada, but also to Australia and London, teaching other people about QuickBooks Online. I'm also co-host of the award-winning uh, Accounting Decon. Love to have you join us for that virtual conference if you're interested. As well as the LinkedIn group that I have, it has over 53,000 member, 53, members and it's just growing rapidly. Enough about me, let's talk about QBO. First of all, if you want to go into the sample company and play around with QuickBooks Online, you can do that. This is a US based company, uh, but you can pause and jot down that URL and you can get in there and access the sample company and go in there and play around. Nothing is saved when you're in that sample company. Go in there and test out some of these keyboard shortcuts. Anytime you're in a date field, you can hit one letter and it'll take you to a, a today, for example. T for today, Y will get you to the beginning of the year, R, end of the year, M or H for beginning and ending of the month, W or K for beginning and ending of the week. Also, if you hit the plus or minus key, that will move you forward or backwards quickly in that date field. If you want to save a transaction, let's say you're entering an invoice, hit Control-Alt-S. That will save that transaction for you. If you want to calculate an amount, let's say you're in the quantity field and you enter 2 times 5 and tab, it will put a 10 in there for you. You can zoom in or out and doing, uh, sometimes you got to change how things display. Use the control plus or control minus or hold down the control key and scroll up or down on your mouse to zoom in or out of things. Let's go on into QBO and show you some of these. So here I am on the home page. If I hit the control plus, it will zoom out. If I hit control minus, it will zoom in or out, whatever, backwards or forwards. It'll zoom in or out, um, depending on what you're doing, making things bigger or smaller so that you can see it. So if something's not displaying quite right, let's say you can't see the save and close. Control minus makes it littler so you can see more things on your screen. So keep that in mind. Another thing, whenever you're working with the internet, when you're working with browsers, you should clear your cache and cookies on a regular basis, especially when you're working with QuickBooks Online. If something's not displaying properly or doesn't seem to be updating right or just working sluggish, clear your cache and cookies. To do that in Google Chrome, if you click on the three little menu bar up here in the upper right corner and go ahead and click on Tools, Clear browsing data. And you want to make sure that you go ahead and clear this data from the beginning of time. So clear your cache and cookies. Now, I'm not going to do that because then it would log me out. And I don't really want to log out right now. But you can do that in Firefox as well. So again, you should be using Chrome or Firefox. Don't use Internet Explorer because some things don't work right. But you can clear your cache and cookies in either one of those. Um, also, another thing that I'd like to let you know about um, is the ability to do tabbed browsing. Because because this is a big deal. Um, oh, before I talk about tabbed browsing, also make sure you've enabled um, pop-ups. Sometimes you'll see something that says you have to allow pop-ups. Um, in Google Chrome, you'll see the little red X right up here that you need to click on to allow pop-ups. In um, Firefox, it's going to be right about here where you need to allow fire, uh, pop-ups. Um, so let's talk about the tabbed browsing. You want to see things sometimes in more than one window. In the desktop version, we had our open windows list. Well, when we're working with QuickBooks Online, we're going to have tabbed browsing. So here I am on my home page. Let's say I want to go in and look at some reports. I can right click on that link and say open this in a new tab or a new window. And this works in Firefox as well. Open it in a new tab or a new window. This will open it to another tab up here. So once you're logged in, it's going to go ahead. Now I've got another one over here. Let's say I'm wanted to go into my customers and open that up, I can do that. I may want to duplicate this tab. If I right click up here, duplicate. And then I could say up here on my customers, I want to go back to the reports that I had. You can hit the back arrow. Now you didn't see me go up and hit the back arrow up here because I've got a forward and back button on the side of my mouse so I can do that real quickly with my thumb. I recommend you get one of those um, mice. Mine is actually the Logitech M510. It's the Logitech M510. It's not very expensive and allows you to go forward. So see I can go forward 
and I can go backwards just by using that little button with my thumb on my mouse. I don't have to go up here and hit the back and forward button. That saves me a lot of time when I'm navigating, not just in, in QuickBooks Online, but anything I'm navigating in any browser or even navigating through the folders and the files on my computer. That forward and back button saves me a ton of time. So back to the tabbed browsing. I now have several different tabs open up here. I can rearrange these tabs by clicking and dragging and dropping and moving them around if I want to. If if you wanted to take one of these over to a separate browse, a separate monitor, click on the tab, hold it, drag it down, and I could take this over to my second monitor over there. Or you can do a split screen. So watch how I can do a split screen. If you've got one of the large monitors, you might want to see two things side by side. Wow, Michelle, how'd you do that? That was cool. You did it too fast. Okay, I'll show you. You click on this title bar up here where you can drag and drop and move the window around. You take the mouse to the edge of the screen and then you drop it. So over to the edge and drop. So click to drag it around, mouse to the edge of the screen, drop. That will automatically do the split screen. So when you've got your large um, monitors, you can do that or you can take it over to a second monitor. Now I can pull that back over and put it back in here with this group of tabs if I wanted to do that. You can do tabbed browsing in Firefox as well. I can right click on reports, open in a new tab or a new window, but I can't right click up here and say duplicate tab. What you can do instead is you hold down the control key and you click and drag and drop and that's the equivalent of duplicating it. You again then could click here and drag and drop, pull that over to a second window, things like that. So you can do the same type of things in Firefox um, as well as in Chrome. But I do think you should use Chrome instead of Firefox and here's the re a couple of reasons. The first reason is you can create multiple users in Google Chrome. So you can click on this three little menu bar up here, go down to settings and create a user in Chrome. See down here, I've already got several different users. I could click add a new user to create a new one, but I've already got four different users. Up here in the upper left, see where I've got my little happy face guy? I've also got my QuickBooks user here, my Michelle the puppy dog, and this is the one I use most of the time for Gmail or Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, my normal browsing. Because when I clear my cache and cookies, I don't want it clearing it on everything all the time. So what you want to do is you want to have a separate user that you use for QBO so that when you clear your cache and cookies, it doesn't affect other things. The other reason you want your separate user here um, for QBO is when you come into QBO, one of the things people complain about is it takes too many clicks. This is what I've been hearing and reading in the community forums. I, it takes too many clicks. If I want to go to the chart of accounts, I have to come up here and click, and then I have to come over here and click on the chart of accounts. And that's too many clicks. I don't want to do that. Well, guess what? Watch this. I can come up here and click on the chart of accounts. Bam, one click. This is the longs one click trick. You can one click and you can get into the chart of accounts. One click, I can get into my reconcile screen. The things that you do most frequently that you like, we want to bookmark them and put them up here. This won't affect your other bookmarks because over here in this other puppy dog user, you can have separate bookmarks for your normal browsing. But this is your QBO user. You've got your one click bookmarks up here that Michelle Long told you how to save time. So remember that. Now, how do we do that? Let's say, um, let me go over here and let's say under the transactions and the sales transactions, I like to come in here and filter my sales transactions quite a bit. So maybe I want to bookmark this page. You come up here and you click on the little drop down thing here. You come over here and you click on bookmarks. Whoops, I'm sorry. You just click here on the little star. Just click to save the bookmark. Silly me. Click the star, sales transactions, click done. Um, and that's going to go ahead and do that. This other one here, that's for your bookmark. Bookmarks, you may need to click this to show the bookmarks bar. See how it goes away? Or you click that, bookmarks, show that to show the bar. So now let me go ahead and close that window. I'm here in QuickBooks. I want to go to my sales transactions. Click on that sales transactions and boom, that's going to come up for you. The one click trick up here. Now here's what's really cool. If you have more than one company, you can log into multiple companies. Right here, I'm in Matt's moving company. Over here in Firefox, I'm in the sample company. So that's one way to do it by being into the two different browsers. Remember, don't use Internet Explorer because things don't work right. The other way to do that is I've got one open here in my Happy Face user and in my Puppy Dog user here, 
I can have another company open as well. For some reason, my internet's decided to be slow, but in different users, I can have different companies open. Now, be careful with that because it all looks the same. Um, so it's hard to differentiate. You have to go look up here to the company name. So you can see here's the, the this Mississauga test company here. Um, but back in my happy face, Jutland, I'm back over here and I'm in Matt's moving company. So you can be in multiple company files with Google Chrome in multiple users. But the other thing is when I if I'm an accountant and a uh, accounting professional and you're using QuickBooks Online Accountant, you may want to go in and out of multiple company files. So I'm right now in Matt's moving company. What if I want to go into Ketchner and go into this other one? Let me go ahead and close out of that one here and go into Ketchner. I can actually go into a different company. It, when you're using QBOA, it will automatically log you into that other company. Um, it's coming. It's just being a little slow today for some reason. It'll automatically log you in. Now you can see I'm in the Kitchener Moving Company. Watch this. Remember, Long's one-click trick. I want to go into my Profit and Loss Report. Click on that, and it will create that P&L for me for the company that I'm in. Sales transactions for the company that I'm in. This one-click bookmark here, this one-click toolbar that I've showed you how to use will work on multiple companies. However, the thing you have to be careful of is the check register because if the accounts have different IDs, that's where you're going to have a little bit of a problem. If the checking account in one company is account number 10 and the checking account in another one is account number 35, then that's not going to work quite right for you. But if you have consistent account numbers and these all these other tools up here are going to work regardless of whatever company you're logged in now the other thing that people are going to say is well wait a minute Michelle what if somebody logs into my QBO user you have to log into this user with a username and password you also then have to log into QBO the first time before these bookmarks are going to work so I encourage you to set up a separate user in Google Chrome that you're going to use um, for QuickBooks Online so when you clear your cache and cookies it doesn't mess up your other browsing and, and things that you're doing also create the longs one click trick toolbar up here so you can access these things quickly easily and efficiently try some of that out and I bet you're going to enjoy working in the new QuickBooks Online a lot more um, so let's go ahead and just summarize a few things here. Um, I want to thank you for watching. I want to encourage you to watch some of my other videos that I'm doing um, because I've done one on an intro um, showing you how to navigate the basic navigation, moving around the toolbars and things like that. I'm going to do one talking about accessing it from your iPad and your iPhone, as well as some other ones that we're going to do on setting up on sales and customers, purchases and vendors, and some more videos. So subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my blog, and if you've got questions, my LinkedIn group and that Intuit Community Forum are both great resources. Thanks for watching.